Okay, the next problem I want to look at is uh, problem 60 from chapter 22, okay? So here we are given some uh, charge configuration that consists of some thin plane of charge that has a surface charge density, sigma, some very large plate of charge, we are just seeing this from the side, and next to it, attached to this, is a slab of charge, a slab of thickness D, and this has surface, uh, sorry, charge density rho. Okay, and we are being asked the electric field uh, to the left of the plane, to the right of the slab, and inside the slab. So three regions, and we are asked the electric field. Now, um, especially for the third part, there is an easy way and a hard way to solve this problem. I'm going to show the hard way, but I'm also going to show the easy way. Now, there are multiple ways to solve this problem. Uh, so one, well, first, first let's take a look at this. Now, how would you approach this problem? You know the electric field due to this one, right? You know what kind of electric field will be produced by a plane of charge. So the electric field will be pointing in two ways, and its magnitude will be sigma by two epsilon naught. Okay? Now, you can think of the slab as consisting of thin slices that each has some uh, that each has some surface density sigma and just put together, put next to each other. Okay? Now, because this electric field is independent of distance, you can just add those up. Okay? Because uh, even though this point is going to be at different distances from these slices that forms your slab, uh, it's not going to make a difference. Uh, it's still going to produce a constant electric field at a given point. Okay? Now, with this in mind, we can actually uh, apply Gauss's law. So this produces an electric field that's independent of distance. This should also produce an electric field that's independent of distance from the slab. So uh, if I choose a Gaussian surface, let's choose a cylinder, in this case. Okay. Now I'm choosing a cylinder here, but you could also choose something like a rectangular prism or a triangular prism, doesn't really matter. As long as the sides are perpendicular to the plane and the slab and the faces on the two sides are uh, parallel to the plane and the slab, uh, any, any prism uh, is suitable. Doesn't really matter. So this is going to have some surface area S, and we are going to have some distance, but uh, the, the, the thickness, the height of the cylinder, doesn't really matter. Okay? But uh, the point is, the electric field on these two sides is going to be equal and opposite to each other. So I'm going to have some electric field here, <coughs> and some electric field over here. And I'm going to have some surface element over here and some surface element over here. Uh, this is a closed surface, a closed Gaussian surface, and uh, the direction of the infinitesimal area element is chosen to be normal to outwards. And here, V is going to be perpendicular, but E is still going to be in this direction. So here, these are going to be perpendicular to each other, here and here they are going to be parallel to each other. Okay. So now let's apply Gauss's law to this situation. Uh, Gauss's law says that E dot dA is going to be equal to uh, charge enclosed uh, divided by epsilon naught. Okay. And this surface integral is over my whole cylinder. For the sides, it's going to vanish. Uh, for the top and bottom, uh, so for the sides, this dot product is going to vanish because they are perpendicular to each other. For the top and bottom, the dot product is going to turn into a simple product because uh, they are parallel to each other. Okay? So this now becomes, for the top and bottom, E dA uh, is Q enclosed by epsilon. Let's, let, let's keep this. Uh, so what will be the uh, electric field over these two, well, it is constant, right? It's equidistant. Uh, this is going to produce a constant electric field. It's going to produce a constant electric field. It doesn't matter how far we are. On the two sides, the magnitude of the electric field is going to be constant. I can take this out. So this becomes for top and bottom dA. And now the surface integral over just the top and bottom is just becomes the surface area of the top and bottom. I've chosen that to be S, so it's going to be 2S, E 2S. Now, what about the charge enclosed? Now, the charge enclosed uh, for the plate that has uniform surface charge density sigma is easy. So this is going to be 
this is going to have two parts. So Q plane and Q slab. Right, so the Q plane is just going to be the surface area times sigma. And the other one is going to be the total area that's enclosed by this closed surface times rho. Now that, sorry, total volume enclosed by this uh, closed surface times rho, and the total volume enclosed by this surface is going to be just the surface area times the thickness of the slab. Okay. So this is uh, V times rho, so S sigma plus S D times rho. Okay. So the right hand side here becomes S sigma plus, uh, this is a little bit bad, divided by, it's not, I don't want to put D in front because then this looks like a differential, it's not a differential. This D is just the thickness of the slab. Okay, so we set these two equal to each other. Uh, S's are going to cancel as they should, right? This is a hypothetical, uh, hypothetical uh, Gaussian surface, so it should not depend on the shape that we choose for this Gaussian surface. It should not depend on S at all. So S's are going to cancel. And then the electric field magnitude, which is same for both right and left, is going to be sigma plus rho d divided by two epsilon naught. And this does check out in the case that uh, this thickness is infinitesimal. If this vanishes, we recover our original formula. So at least that part checks out. Uh, and if we don't have, uh, if we don't have the plate, then this just vanishes. But uh, we don't have anything. Uh, if, you, if you saw that problem before, then you can also check that limiting case. Okay. So this is the this is the easier part of the problem. In part C, they are asking for the electric field inside the slab. Now the hard way to do that would be to choose another Gaussian surface like this. where the faces will be equidistant from the slab, okay? and then you will use proposition. So there will be some electric field that's produced by this plate, this one, and there will be some electric field that's produced by the charge distribution inside the slab, and that you can calculate by using a Gaussian surface like this. You f first forget about, the, uh, forget about the plate, okay? Then this becomes uh, reflectionally symmetric, so the electric field on two sides is going to be the same, and you can just proceed this way. Uh, calculate the charge inside and uh, just uh, get the electric field that's due to the charge distribution inside the slab. And using this proposition, you can add those up. But this is a little bit hard. Now, you can do it. I'm not going to do it. Uh, but this is hard. Now, what is the alternative? The alternative is to choose a Gaussian surface uh, such that the one part of the Gaussian surface is in a region where you know the electric field. So instead of that, I can choose something like this. Okay. Now one part of the Gaussian surface is inside, where I'm looking for the electric field. The other part of the Gaussian surface is outside, for which I already know the electric field. Okay. So this is E outside. Okay. And now we can't use reflectional symmetry. We cannot say that. Uh, these two integrals are just going to be the same, and so on and so forth. We cannot say E is same on two sides, so I can take it out of the integral, anything like that. But we can write this for the two parts. So let's call this one top, this part top, and this part bottom. So we can just take this integral and divide this into two parts. Okay? So how would that look like? So I proceed exactly the same way up to this point. Now, of course, these are no longer applicable. But what I did over here is applicable. So I'm going to have the two parts. So one is going to be E outside. Then this is going to be uh, over the top. The A plus the inside, which is what I'm looking for, or the A. Uh, and this, is, this integral is over the bottom. Now, both of these are now, again, 
very simple integrals, they just uh, reduce down to uh, S. <coughs> so I can write this out. So I'm going to erase this, but uh, we will need to use it. So this just becomes uh, S times E out plus S times E in, which is what I'm looking for. Now what about this part? What about that part? That's the Q enclosed. So that Q enclosed is now for this. A plus, of course, this plate. So again, this is going to have two parts. There is going to be some Q coming from the plate and some Q coming from the slab. The Q coming from the plate is the same. It's going to be S times sigma. And this is going to be V times rho. Now the V is not going to be the full thickness times the surface area, but whatever depth you are going in times the surface area. And let's call that depth. Uh, so let's choose some coordinate system, X. So this would be just X. This is going to be S sigma plus <coughs> uh, X times or S times X times rho. So this is going to be S sigma plus X rho divided by epsilon naught. Okay, so you need to write this such sigma plus X rho over epsilon naught. And as should be, the S's again just cancel, they go away. You, you, E out is something you already know. I just raised it, this in, take this to the other side, and you're going to have your answer. So this is going to be the electric field uh, inside the, uh, inside the, <coughs> inside the slab. And uh, for some values, in particular for large values of rho, uh, when x is small, you will find that this actually gives a negative number, which is what you would expect, right? So uh, this, uh, this slab, by itself is going to have electric field you know, outwards from uh, the center plane that divides us into two, more or less. So this is going to produce an electric field outward from the plate in both directions. But if the if rho is large, then the effect of this is going to actually overcome. And there will be some region over here that the electric field is going to be in the negative direction. Yeah? So that's, the, that's one thing to keep in mind. And it does lead to this, right? So if this is some large number and you take it to the other side, it's going to potentially lead to some uh, negative number. 